Welcome to Southside Uncovered, where we peel back the layers of South Phoenix, a community shrouded in mystery and often eclipsed by sprawling metro areas around it. In our gripping first episode, we meet Chi Chapman. We gonna do something. Go hard and go hard, hard. His journey from the gritty streets of South Phoenix to becoming an entrepreneurial powerhouse is nothing short of extraordinary. Not even on no arrogant shit or no cocky shit, but uh, like fashionable, business-wise, fly shit, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm the one and only, the first nigga to do a trendsetter, to be honest with you. His story is one of relentless pursuit, triumph over adversity, and a deep-rooted connection to his roots. I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna stay on the south side. I'm, I'm not moving outside of South Phoenix. Through riveting interviews and candid revelations, Chi exposes the harsh realities and hard-won victories of his upbringing in the electrifying neighborhood. Somebody got shot in the head. They lived, but they got shot in the head. I actually got I actually got put on probation. That's probably the most money I've ever made in my life at this, this particular party I'm about, I'm about to get into. Prepare yourself for a deep dive into the uncharted territories of South Phoenix. This is Southside Uncovered. You want me to sit there right here? Right here? Right there, yeah, yeah. Right there? All right. Everything good, everything good. Looking at this camera right here or this one right here? Okay, so. So, Cheese, great to have you here today. No, I appreciate it, man. Man, you've made quite a name for yourself in Phoenix. Um, starting from the South Side, building a reputation as an entrepreneur and even a cultural influencer. You were organizing legendary parties to launch in unique fantasy and, and even a record label eventually. We'll get into that, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So your, your journey has been impressive. I know there was perceptions of you growing up, um, and I want you to clear, clear the air about you know, that in, in regard, um, but you're determined, you know what I mean? You've been driven, you've created something that's remarkable and I'm excited to dive into your story yeah. and learn more about your experience, man. Glad to have you here. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Uh, one thing I want to say, man, um, you know, I appreciate that intro for sure. Yeah, you, um, before we started rolling, you said they don't know Chi, they got to know Chi. Man, they don't know me, man. I think a lot of people, uh, they don't know me, man. I gotta kind of let them know who I am, yeah. um, what I've done, my background. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some new, there's some new people out there that don't know me. There's a lot of people from the city that do know me, mm -hmm. but they don't know my full story. All right. Well, let's let's start with the story. Yes, um, sir. Tell them, tell the people where you're from. Man, I'm I'm from South Phoenix, man. Mm -hmm. Born and raised, man. Um, I grew up in the New Homes. Uh, new Homes is between Baseline and Southern for the people that's from the South Side, you know what I'm saying, the Elliott Homes. Um, my dynamic is a little different though, man. I went to school on the East Side. So I didn't go to school on the South Side, you know what I'm saying? I went to school in East Phoenix. I went to Wilson Elementary. Um, that's near, the, right by the Celebrity Theater. That's so, the parking swap, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the dog races and all of that type of shit, that's the, that's the environment that I went to school on, but I've always stayed on the South Side. Um, I mean, I, I don't got that uh, that struggle story. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I ain't from no hood. Um, you know, my, my parents did a great job, you know what I mean? My mom and my step pops, they raised me and my brothers. Um, um, so it's, 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 it's my brother Mike, my brother Tyrese. Uh, I got brothers through my marriage. Uh, Lorenzo, uh, Richard Jr., and I got a sister named Tiani. So there's a few of us, man. A lot of people don't know that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, as far as, you know, my come up, bro, coming up on the South Side, met a lot of great people on the South Side, mm -hmm. let a, met a lot of great people on the East Side, East Lake area. Yeah. You feel me? Before, you know, before we get into that story, because yeah, we're yeah. we going to get there. Yeah, yeah. Um, what? Tell me about your parents. Are they from Phoenix originally? How did they get out? How'd your people uh, get out here? So my mom, she's from a small town called Safford, Arizona. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Very, very small town. Um, my pops, he's from, uh, he grew up in Park South. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, pretty much my mom, she she stayed in Safford for not that long. And then she she came to South Phoenix. Mm -hmm. what, so when you were growing up, what kind of work were your parents doing? Uh, my mom's always been like, Mortgage, you know, mortgage, real estate, banking type of type of field. Yeah. My pops, uh, he's always like did uh, uh, warehouse work. Yeah. You feel me? Okay. So they've been in. My mom's been in mortgage shit probably thirty five years. Mm hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. 
What are some of the things that you growing up that you saw in the household that either, for example, like, you know, like my wife, she grew up and it was really hard. She seen her dad struggle and she was like, I'm never, I never want that life for me because she's yeah. seen how hard it was yeah, for, yeah, for her. Yeah. So we can go through like hard times and it's either, you're either going to become a part of that or vow to never, to never do that. You know, the people who grew up with parents who were alcoholics, they either going to be an alcoholic because they saw how jacked up that was. Yeah. They staying so far away. So for you, were there any things in your life that you saw that you either said, I want exactly that or I want to do something completely opposite of that? You know, coming up, man, my mom was super strict, bro. Mm -hmm. My mom played no games at all, bro. So I had to get good grades. I had to do my chores. My mom, she always used to say, like, coming up, I would see my mom, like, sick. You know what I mean? She have her days where she's sick. And I'm like, mom, just stay home from, from, from work. And my mom always used to say, you don't work, you don't eat. I, like, if I'm sick or not, we still got to pay these bills. Mm -hmm. So that always stuck in my mind with me. That always stuck in my mind, even when I start, you know, growing up and figuring out who I was. Like, I, that's that's one thing that always stuck in my mom that my mom said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, but just, yeah, my mom, she had a she had a hard childhood, you know, coming up. So she didn't want that for her kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why we didn't go to the schools on the South Side. My mom went to, she, my mom went to South. Yeah. She was one of them females fighting out, you know what I mean? Like fighting and just just running the streets, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Um cuz my mom she she she's she's a very strong woman, bro. Super strong. And growing up, she was always with the shit. Always with the shit, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So with us coming up, you know what I mean? She was like, "I'm not putting y'all in no south side schools. Y'all going to go to school on the east side." Yeah. You feel me? Even though we lived on the south side, you commuted. my mom was just like, "Oh well, you going like I could have went to Chavez, mm -hmm. I could have went to, you know, uh um all the different schools around the, uh, you know, Sarah Vista, like all the different schools, future, uh, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I could have, the walking distance from the crib. Yeah. But my mom like, nah, y'all going to school on the east side and y'all, and that's just, that's just what it was. You yeah. Know what I mean? So you went to, you went to school on the east side. So how did that affect like the friendships that you had on the south side? Did that affect it in any type of way? Nah, not at all, man. Like, you know, uh, coming up, on the south side, you know, our neighborhood, um, a lot of great people that, that I grew up with. Um, Darren Cobbs and uh, Shitty and, and uh, Josh Bennett, um, Lawrence, uh, uh, Box, uh, who else, man? It was a lot of motherfuckers. Quadir, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Gabe Freeman. Like, our neighborhood was cracking, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Quentin. Uh, so were they all living in the new homes with you? Yeah, we all live. Yeah, we all live right around the corner. We yeah. used to hoop almost every day, hooping. Um, it didn't really affect none because I had my homies on the east side that I was like real good friends with from the sandbox, and then I had my south side homies too. That that was you know that we were still sandbox homies too. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so it, it, I just had a great dynamic though. You know what I mean? Most of my friends on the on the east side were Hispanic. Like my best friends growing up is Hispanic. You feel me? Like, and then I'm on the south side. A lot of black folks is mixed. You know what I'm saying? East side around the time I was coming up, the area that I went to school in, nothing but Hispanics, Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was probably when we graduated eighth grade, it was only two black people that graduated the graduating class. Me and my boy Devin Kane. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But yeah, bro, that culture, Mexican culture, Spanish, bro. That's all. That's all I really knew growing up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but no, nah, it didn't affect shit. Like, uh, my homies is still tapping in with me and shit. Yeah. Coming up. Yeah. There's a perceived notion growing up that you were the Richie Rich kid in the neighborhood. <laughs> how accurate do you think that that is? And how, and if so, or if not, how did it affect some of the relationships you had growing up? Uh, man, you know, um, on my come up, man, uh, my mom, bro, she, she definitely um, looked out for us, bro. Like, um, and a lot of people, I had a lot of haters coming up. A lot of niggas was, who was this nigga? Cause you know, like I said, I didn't, I didn't go to school on the South side. You know what I mean? I, I like wine, like just basketball activities. You know what I'm saying? I would run into different niggas on my come up. You know what I'm saying? Like Salvation Army, you know, YMCA, uh, the center, like shit like that. So a lot of motherfuckers didn't really know who I was. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I always had all the, I had everything I, I've always wanted, bro. I was all, I was always fresh. 
You feel me? I, nice, nice jewelry and nice haircuts and um, had a little bit of bread on me. You know what I'm saying? Had nice cars. You feel me? But yeah, a lot of motherfuckers hate it. You know what I mean? They, they, I mean, a lot of the motherfuckers was hating on me. Man. Tell me, let's go into that. Tell me about some of the things that you went through when it comes to people hating on you and how they were um, treating you. Uh, you know, I, I think there was this narrative like, you know, his mom and them got money or he ain't really a South Side nigga or, you know, just this certain weird shit like that. Um, I, a couple of times where I got my windows busted out, you feel me, on, on the whip, you know, we'll be at a party somewhere and niggas know that's my car because I got my name on the license plate. I got my name on the back, you know what I'm saying? Like, so niggas used to just do do hate and shit, you know what I mean? Bust my windows out or uh, slash my tires type shit, you know what I'm saying? Or just, just hating or just uh, nigga will be somewhere and, and the nigga may bump into me, like just trying to see, you know what I mean? Try, you know, trying to get a reaction for me, but they always got a reaction, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? How would you react? Like, what's happening? What, what we on? You know what I'm saying? Because... I had niggas with me, bro. Like I, I'ma keep it a buck. I had I had a team of niggas with me. Um, that was always ready for whatever, you know what I mean? Um, they, you know, they upbringing was different from mine, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, but I, I was one of them niggas that's kind of I would think about the shit I do before I do it. My niggas didn't, you know what I mean? Like if it's up, it's up. I'm like, hey bro, don't even trip. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This ain't the this ain't the time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I that that was my type of shit, like, you know what I mean? But Coming up, a lot, of, a lot of haters, a lot of people doing shicey shit. Um, niggas mad because I may have took that girl. You know what I mean? That girl chose up. So I had a lot of like a lot of beef. Not I wouldn't necessarily say beef. But just a lot of niggas didn't like me because that girl chose up or something like that coming up. You know what I'm saying? But looking back now, right? Would you have done anything differently about how you were moving in those times? Nah, I would have still moved the way I was moving. I think I just I think the flashiness. You know what I mean? I think I'm not a flashy person. I'm humble, bro. Super humble. I don't, I don't care about none of that type of shit. I don't care about the jewelry, the car. You know what I mean? I think one thing I would change is just, just kind of be low key with it. Like, don't put my name on the license plate, name on the back. You know, back of the back of the window. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah. I, heard that, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I think yeah, I think I was. It was just, bro. I just think that that was just a part of me. It wasn't me being flashy. That was just, that's just who she was. Yeah, like, that's just that was just me coming up. Yeah, I went. I, I honestly, I went to change shit, bro. I'm, I'm. I think that's kind of how I was popping, though. You know what I mean? I was popping coming up, like, and I wasn't even trying to pop. I, it's just, I just was a nigga that was popping. You know what I mean? So you drove a, uh, was it a red, red Mustang? Yeah, in high school. Yep, yeah, I had a convertible Mustang. Yeah. So you remember this? So, so how did this impact how people viewed you? Is this the same car that they busted the windows out on? Yeah, yeah. Um. For me to be that young, I was 15. For me to be that young, um, at all the homies and shit, and I went to I went to a um, the high school I went to um, Mount Point, which was in which is in Ahwatukee, um, around that time. Um, the dynamic has changed. The scenery has changed in Ahwatukee since I went to high school there, of course. Um, but it's known as all white Tukey. Everybody there was stupid rich stupid rich um mainly caucasians like 95 percent caucasians and then just a sprinkle of black people hispanics asians and you know shit like that um so when i got that car everything changed for me everything changed everything changed how so um i was that guy man i was i was i was a 15 year old dude in a drop top convertible mustang Rally stripes, black and red rims, interior TVs. Like I was that nigga, bro. I'm pulling up everywhere. We going to Desa Vista versus Mountain Point games. All the homies want to roll with me. You know what I mean? All my homies was they was whipping, but they didn't have they didn't have you know they didn't have a, a Mustang. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, a convertible Mustang at that. So everything changed, bro. My popularity. I was already popular. My older brother was a a, a senior when I was a freshman. So I was already, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. already like, you know, popular and popping. But once I got that car, man, and, and mind you, I didn't even know how to drive like that. You know what I'm saying? 
So I got the car before I even knew how to drive. You know what I'm saying? Um, but everything changed, man. Everything changes as far as like a lot of females trying to holler at me and you know what I mean? And niggas is hating. Niggas is still hating. Like, man, like who who's this little ass nigga with this? Was they hating before the car? Yeah, yeah. So then the car. Just... It just yeah, that just added the icing on, on the on the cake right yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, bro. It it I mean it it changed for the it, I think it changed for the changed for the better though. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was just I was just outside, man. I was really really outside. I was everywhere. You you mentioned that you went to school with your older brother. Yes, sir. So did he lay a foundation for you? Do you feel like? because of your brother and who he was that that allowed you to do or give you the confidence like what did he teach you as far as chi and who chi is now oh definitely man um having him there you know um when i was when i was uh because he was already driving and doing all of that type of shit so i'm i'm riding with him you know what i mean he had a flashy car 215s in a trunk tvs like you know what I'm saying? But he was always like my protector though. You know, anybody messing with my brother, you know what I mean? Y'all gonna get, you know what I mean? What's your brother's name? Uh, Mike. Mike. Mike Johnson, yeah. So at that time, it, that, at that time, Dynasty was around. I don't know if you remember Dynasty, but uh. Well, no. Yeah, Dynasty, yeah, 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 yeah. So like all the big homies like Kendall Pittman, Chubb, Billy Palmer, my brother, like I was, I was under them, you know what I mean? Like as a freshman. So, so the, the, the popularity and just that, that stamp, I, it was it was it was up it was up at that time. I'm 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 hanging out with them. I'm chilling with them, walking around with them, and I'm a freshman. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So at that point, it just after that, just that stamp and everybody like, who's this? Who's this little dude right here? And oh, that's Mike, brother. That's Chi. That's Chi. And then I developed my own name and my own um, foundation. Let's know. talk about Chi. How how did that name come about? Uh, man, my aunt, man, my aunt Roxanne, man. Um. My mom's uh, little sister. Um, she gave she gave me that name when I was when I was young, man. When I was super super young, everybody in the family called me Chi Chi. The whole family. So if you if you if I walk around and somebody call me Chi Chi or something like that, they know me for real for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my aunt, she just man, I was I was just such a I was such a little baby when I was born. You know what I mean? I was born like I think I, I was born a couple months early. You know what I'm saying? And um, my aunt, bro, she was in love with me, bro. My aunt, she was probably just, like, you would think that was my mom. You know what I'm saying? But she gave me that name, and then that's my whole life, bro. Everybody called me, you know, now they shorten it to Chi. You know what I'm saying? But, man, that name has just stuck with me, bro. A lot of people don't even know my real name, bro. One of the first things that that you hear about the South Side is that it's just the hood. You know what I mean? But then when I, I got out here and I realized the South Side isn't just one big hood. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And yeah. it's not just all, like you said, you have new homes within that, which I think is unique because there's some neighborhoods like where I'm from in Oakland, there's neighborhoods where it's just all old. You know what yeah, I mean? Old, it, just, yeah. it ain't nothing new. It's been the same way, same liquor store, same everything for decades. Yeah. When you think about it like that, when you have neighborhoods like the Vistas, Park yeah, yeah. South. For sure, for sure. Who, who These are... I guess legendary hoods yeah, on the sure. south side. Yeah, for sure. How did the new homes impact the dynamic of those hoods? Meaning, were people leaving, like some of the hustlers, were they leaving the vistas or Park South and moving to the new homes? How did, how, how, from your experience, like, was it just people moving in from outside of Phoenix or other places? Like, who was actually living in the in the new homes, and how do you think they got there? Um, I think it's a little bit of like both. I, I, I think around that time, uh, this is like like a KB Homes, you mm-hmm. know. The, um, and I think for anything, like kind of like how Levine is cracking right now. Like back in the day, Levine, nobody was like, "Well, what the fuck? Ain't nothing out there." It was just, you know what I'm saying? So the Elliott Homes, bro. I think that for the South Side, everybody was like, "Damn, look at these big ass houses getting built over here on 16th Street." You know what I mean? It's between Baseline and Southern, like everybody, everybody wanted to move over there at the time because it was they wasn't really like. Was that one of the first newer developments yeah, in? Yeah, South that Phoenix? was the first newer developments in South Phoenix. Yeah. So my mom, you know, um, and I'm not sure where we would stand out prior, prior to that. I think we was on the East Side, um, prior to the new homes. Um, I, I don't recall. I don't remember, but. Um, everybody was like, those was the, 
that, that, that was a new lick. Everybody wanted to come over there. You know what I mean? Even though they was building houses, but further out. You know what I mean? Like in like different areas. Like, like further west, like Litchfield Park. Yeah, like Bell. like yeah, like the west side, or maybe building homes in like Temp. Like I would say Tempe. Um, I would say yeah, Tempe, probably Albuquerque, shit like that. So. When people was like, "Damn, we ain't we ain't gotta we ain't gotta go too far." Like they're building some nice ass homes on the south side. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So at that point, when we moved in, it was people. They just started building them all up, man. And um, that's just how it was. I think a lot of people um, didn't want to. You know, there's some people that's just like, "I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna stay on the south side. I'm I'm not moving outside of South Phoenix." Yeah. And that's how my parents them is. My parents them they love South Phoenix. They've always stayed on, stayed in South Phoenix, and they're not leaving South Phoenix. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, once once those homes got like you know, like you know, they you know got older after a while. Your family's growing. You know, we moved to Seventh Street and in, in, in uh Seventh Street and Dobbins. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. That's what it is. That's to me what's really unique about South Phoenix. Other a lot of other neighborhoods. If you want to upgrade your lifestyle, you got to leave the hood. Yeah. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like if you just even if you don't have a problem living in the hood, but say you just want a nicer house, so you need a bigger house. You know what I'm saying? You want a new house. Like, you can't do that in yeah. the hood. Phoenix is one of the few places that I've seen where you can upgrade your whole life and damn near feel like you moved to the suburbs, but still be in the neighborhood you grew up to, still be in the same school district. Yeah. And I think that that's hella dope. No, that's dope, for sure, for sure. Yeah, my parents always stayed on the South, like 7th Street and Dobbins, 24th Street and, uh, 24th Street and, uh, like. Baseline? I wouldn't say baseline, kind of like. Kind of like uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to explain it. It was a small, new built neighborhood on like 24th Street, uh, but it was like ducked off though. Was it south of Baseline? You know where uh, Circle K Park is? Yep. Like going the back way, like I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, that's in the cut. Yeah, yeah. So they lived over there for a while, and then once they you know leveled up again, they bought a house, a brand new built right there on Seventh Street and Baseline. Mm-hmm. So they all they sixteen we sixteenth street, seventh street, twenty fourth street. That's that's you know what I mean? That's yeah. all right there. Yeah. They they didn't want to move to Levine when Levine got popping. They wanted to stay right there. So after high school, you started to get into the party promotion and you you guys formed a group called Dynasty, right? Is that how it no, worked? No, so we so so Dynasty was this that was in high school. Okay. Um and then uh, that was just our little clique. That was just a high school thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, after high school is when I really started like throwing different events, uh, doing uh, all type of parties, just making money off parties. That's before they started turning dangerous. Mm. Okay, before we go there, yeah. what was the? Do you remember the first party you threw? Yeah, man. Uh, the first party I threw. Um, uh, it was the, it was a hot and wet party. The hot boy party? Hot and wet, Oh, yeah. hot and wet party, okay. Hot and wet, that was for my boy LB, you know, L Lamarck. Mm -hmm. um, it was for his uh, 18th birthday. Uh, it was a Mesa, um, hosted by uh, Marquis Sales. Mm -hmm. um, also, the twins and, and Quentin was also a part of that, a part of that, uh, that function as well. Okay, so people who are throwing parties now are getting into parties. I want you to break down what's the business of throwing parties? Because I've always I've gone, I never understood the business, but I know people make a lot of money, like you said, yeah. just getting money. Like, what's the walk me through the business if you're trying to get in? I know, you know, I want you to go in depth. I know, you know, you throw sell tickets, but like, help me understand like how you really close that deal and walk away at the end of the night with a pocket full of cash. Um, it's it's, it's the main thing is who's throwing the party. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Um, who's on the flyer? Who's coming? That's the main thing. If you popular, you popping, and I I'm, I was known for that. I was known for like throwing parties or, or just people love being around me. You know what I mean? So you were on the you were on the flyer. Yeah, I was on the flyer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Back then, what I would do, I would put my name on everything, cause it 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 would pop. It would pop. Um, and some other people that threw parties back in the day, they'll put special guest chi and you know because I, I had a cool following back in the myspace era you know what i'm saying yeah um i was doing music at the time um so we would perform at different parties 
I would I would throw uh, parties myself so I can get my homies on to perform and do shit like that. So once we seen the success of, damn, bro, um, you know, damn, there's 400 people in here. Next event, there's 500 people in here. We charging the 10 a head, 10, 15 a head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So once we started putting, you know, getting a DJ, breaking all the shit down, we get we getting flyers made. This is around the time where okay. flyers and posters. Okay, so, so that's the first, so yeah, the first yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So first thing is you gotta have a name to put on the flyer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, boom. So you got a name. You're the name. Yep. So you put so you you back then you put them on the flyer. Walk through that process. Yeah. How did you go through about um, making the flyers? So you know, back in the day, bro, um, there wasn't a lot of people doing like I had a guy that was really good at Photoshop. That's when like you had to have somebody uh, make a flyer from own Photoshop back in the day. Yeah. Now everything is just so easy. I can make a flyer right now if I yeah. wanted to. So I had my I had my guy. I would pay him a fee. Um, I had this website I would go to to get the four by six uh, flyers mm -hmm. size. You just get the blank cards. Yeah, blank cards. Um, so I would use him to do the. I would use my graphic guy to do the flyer. Mm -hmm. I will upload the flyer to the website. I will be getting the flyers and the posters from. Mm -hmm. Then uh, me and my team will go out to different events that were going on around the valley. We're passing out. That's when back in the day when you really had to get out there and pass out flyers and get people to come to your shit. Okay, so you would get your team together uh -huh. and you guys would look, all right, say it's a Thursday. Okay, these are the events that are going on mm -hmm. in the valley in Phoenix yes, sir. this weekend. All right, you two go over here, you two go over here, you two go over here. And we about to you, you would stack everybody up, I guess, with maybe like a, a couple hundred flyers yep. each. A couple hundred flyers each. And then we would go out and we would just... Pass them out. We'll put posters on the wall, like on the wall or on wherever, mm -hmm. windows everywhere. Like we'll just put our shit up, and then once we did that, we'll start promoting it on the social media. Back in the day, was just mainly just you know MySpace or and then Facebook eventually took over, of course. Yeah. So we're we're promoting event pages on there to getting people to go. Um, how are you doing that on my on MySpace, right? Yeah, on MySpace. Yep, yep. So how are you promoting? on MySpace during that era? All I was actually doing, to be honest with you, hey, put this, uh, change this to your display picture. So we was having everybody put, change our flyer to their display picture, and then just via text messages too, you know, like that. that's getting around. Um, so, you know, we didn't really have a lot of those uh, marketing options, but we were starting somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Well, those are strong marketing options. Uh -huh. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm asking these questions like this is because though it, you know, like I say, back in the day, but man, a lot of it's applicable now. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like if you ask somebody from 1950, you know, how to run a business, sure, maybe how you market is different, yeah. but the businesses run the same. Run like the, same. Yeah, the, like yeah. the lessons that are transferable, if you're getting into parties now, you got to have somebody who got a name. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. You have to have a name. You, you have, have to have a name. And how you create, and we've even talked about that, how for one, you created your name, a lot of, a, well, your brother already had somewhat of a reputation, right? For sure. And now he's bringing you around, mm -hmm. and they're looking at you like, like, what's up? You know, what are yeah. you, what are you about to do? Yeah, yeah. And then you did something. Yeah, for and sure. And a lot of people might miss that opportunity. You know, sometimes you get the opportunity when people are looking at you, like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. You got to do something, and you did something. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. So, you're promoting, um, you're promoting the parties mm -hmm. via uh, flyers. Uh -huh. Changing the profile pictures on MySpace. Yes, yeah, sir. You're at the different events, um, and now you guys are. How you? How are you finding the venues? I'm I'm driving everywhere, man. I'm dri I'm driving to the venues. I'm looking stuff up on the internet. I'm looking to see. Uh, um, my thing was like location too. Mm -hmm. Um, and my my other thing was how many people can this place hold. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't like the smaller venues. I'm trying to pack the house out so that we can make our money. You know what I'm saying? So I had a I had a real close relationship um, with this dude that owned the Olive Branch. It's no longer there. It's right here on Millen Southern. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do multiple events there. I've done fashion shows. I've done I've thrown probably about six to seven parties at his venue alone. Yeah. Um, so once I found once I just you know had that good relationship with him. He would call me like, hey, you, you trying to throw an event? Because things were slow for him. He lost his liquor license at a point of time. Yeah. Um, and he just needed the money, you know? So me and him being friends, I would do a lot of stuff at the um at his at his spot. Um, 
And I, bro, I would literally just, you know, reach out to other dudes that's throwing parties in the city. Mm -hmm. Outcast Entertainment, High Society, those were two of the biggest party crews on my come up. Um, I would kind of had a good relationship with a lot of those members, and I would like, hey, bro, I'm just this venue, you know what I mean? You trying to do something? Like, I would reach out to other people doing it too mm -hmm. to cut the cost. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was everywhere, man. I'll drive. If I see something that says for rent or for lease or whatever, I'm pulling up, like, Calling the number on on the on the window, yeah. like I was I was going I was getting a venue. Yeah. I was going I was going because I was that money man. It, it got it got to the point where I was making good money off parties, but still working my nine to five too. Mm -hmm. But then it came a time where I would left the party stuff alone because it was getting way too dangerous. To, okay, to, let's get into that. When did yeah. you start to see the dynamic of the parties change and become more dangerous? I mean, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, around that time, it was a lot of. Uh, politics in the streets on the south side. It was like a war going on on the south side. Who was this? Like, now, who was the war between? Uh, it was two gangs, 19th Avenue, Lindo Park, and the Vistas. Okay. You feel and me? This is around 2007. 2007, 2008, yeah. Okay. Um, There's a lot going on around that time. It was a lot of, we lost a lot of, uh, Lost a lot of friends to the streets due to that war. Mm -hmm. you know what were some people that you, you lost? Um, yeah. Man, uh, shit, Baby Corey, man. No, nah, I remember when uh, Baby Corey passed. You know, that was that was big. Yeah, that, yeah, was, that was big, bro. Massive that was, loss. That was the biggest, uh, I think that was the biggest, like for me, wise for South Phoenix. That was probably, that was, a, that was, that was a, that was a big moment, bro. Yeah. So, so things are heating up around this. So the street politics that's happening in the Vistas, that's happening in Lindo Park is starting to bleed over into some of the parties. Right? Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. What's happening? Are, is there any particular um, party that you remember being yeah. the, like, this is it, I can't do this no more? Yeah, what happened? man. Um, so I threw the hot and wet party. I got a relationship with, with uh, you know, with the, with the members, you know what I'm saying? I got a relationship with a couple of the members and I'm like, um, we had a we had a real that's that's probably the most money I've ever made in my life at this this particular party I'm I'm about to get into. Um, I knew I knew shit was going on, um, like the kind of like the start of it. I knew shit was going on. Hey fam, I got my mom and them up here. I got my aunties. You know I I had security. Um, I said hey fam, I don't want I don't want no drama, bro. I don't want nobody to get hurt, bro. I got family up here. Oh no, we respect you, Chi. I, I was okay, like it is what it is. Doing the party, everything is going good. You know what I mean? Everybody having a good time. A couple performances, a fashion show. Um, all at this event I put together. Um, next thing you know, I see people running for their lives. Did you hear anything before? Or are you just seeing people running? I just or seen you even knew what was happening. I just seen people running. And uh Man, it was a whole whole shootout, man. A whole, a whole shootout, man. Um, uh, somebody got hit in their head, yeah, at one of my events. Um, somebody got shot in the head. They lived, but they got shot in the head. Um, since my name was on the the rental agreement, I actually got it. I actually got put on probation, yeah, by Mesa PD. So wait, so okay, so so after all the commotion. Uh, police came, of course, Mesa PD came, um, um, you know, people was running, my mama, my aunties, everybody was running the shit, a couple people fell and got hurt, and that person got shot, so they, you know, they went to the venue, because this was like a, a wedding venue, this place just does weddings, Yeah. but they decided to let me do a party there. Yeah. So, man, Mesa PD, man, um, figured out who I was. And they pulled up to my mama house, mm. and uh, they two unmarked vehicles, like a navigator at the time. And I was, I was, uh, I was walk, I was pulling up. I had the Mustang pulling up to my mama house, and I'm outside doing something, like I'm getting something out the car, bro. They pop out. They pop out, bro. They, they, they. Were, were they in regular police? Or were they like in the suits? No, no, they was in regular police gear. Yeah, but they pop out the navigator. Yeah, yeah. It was two navigators parked on the side of my house. And I'm like, that's weird, you know what I mean? But I didn't see no, the tent so dark, I didn't see who was in there. So I'm outside, I'm pulling up, I got my top, my, my I think, oh, I'm putting up my top. I'm hitting the button for my top to come up because my top was down. And then uh, I'm like putting up, like you know, like the latches, the latches from the top, you got yeah. to pop them in. Yeah, so I hear something behind me and I'm like, what the fuck? And they came up on me, like with with uh, papers and- They served you down there? Yeah, like yeah. yeah, bro. Um, so they came out. Um, 
they tried to put me in the gang task. They 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 put yeah they I mean not they didn't try they did put me in the gang. okay so so they show up so they show up they hop out the navigator they got the papers they run up on yeah. you what do they say they're like uh um you Jeremy you know Jeremy and my you know my last name or whatever and I say yeah this is me um this is for um it was a, it was like a document for court like you got to go to court on this particular day and I'm like what the fuck happened um so it was about that party. So that this was probably that following Monday, Monday, Tuesday of that following. We got through a party like on a Saturday. So that following Monday, Tuesday, that's when they came to the crib. So I ended up going to court, bro. I ended up trying to get a lawyer because they were trying to put me as I'm a gang member and all of this type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because of 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 what was going on. But they didn't have they didn't they didn't have me like as far as what gang I'm in, they just had me in the gang task. You feel me? Yeah. And um Bro, I, I was fighting it for a minute. I ended up, they ended up putting me on probation, bro. I got five years of probation for throwing a party, bro. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, yep. yeah. After they serve you, you go back in, obviously, to the house. Yeah. You took, like, yeah, I told my, I told my mom, and my mom was like, but, uh, but I was like, uh, let me just get my mom real quick. Like, and they were like, no, nah, we, you don't, like, you're a big boy. You don't need to tell your mom. That's the officer told me. Press you. Yeah, so he dropped it off, bro. They hopped back in they uh they navigators, bro, and they smashed off. And I was just fighting it in court. Cause I'm like, hey, I'm not no gang member. I'm not none of this. I just threw parties. Mm -hmm. And mind you, my face was all over that all, all over the flyer. Yeah. You feel me? So I ended up getting four years of uh um probation for that shit, bro. Wow. That so what did so they ended up eventually, I guess, charging you with something? Yeah, they ended up char yeah, they ended up charging me uh with uh, I forgot what it was, like what they charged me with, but I was fighting a, I was fighting it for a while. Um how long do you think you were going to court? Uh at least like four four to six months. Yeah. Yeah. Um I didn't get no lawyer at the time because I'm like, nah, I, ain't, I don't need no lawyer, you know what I'm saying? But I ended up having to pay restitution. To the family? Yeah, to the to the person. For the person I, yeah, yeah, survived, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then I ended up having to uh pay for damages of the place. Hit you, huh? Yeah, they hit me. Looking back, do you think you wish you had got an attorney? Yeah, yeah. Because I was young. I, I didn't know. I was just young and naive and dumb. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, that, that after that, bro, I kind of like, I kind of moved away from the, uh, but then it started getting real, real dangerous. Even me going to different parties. There's mm. a lot of people that lost their life. You know, mm. uh, a, a, a young dude that went to Dobson named Reagan. Reagan died right in front of me at a party. Yeah. Die right in front of me, man. Now, is this still all the Vista Lindo things, or has it expanded? No, no, it's, it's just nah, general. It's expanded. Just in, it was. It's not safe to be outside. Yeah, around that time frame. Two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah, still. yeah, like around that time, man. And um, after that, bro, I kind of um, I kind of fell back off off the party shit. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. those people out there, innocent people, bro. You, you you didn't have nothing to do with what was going on in the streets. Mm -hmm. the innocent bystanders, and that's usually how it works. You know. So 2008, 7, 2008, you at this report are like, I'm done with the parties. You've gone to court. You've been charged. Yeah. You're on probation because of what happened at one of your events. Yeah, sure. In that moment, do you is this when you start to go more into the film and video side of things? Or was there something that happened before that? Nah, nah. That's when I started uh, really focusing on um, film and uh, fashion. At this particular point. What challenges and successes did you face when you decided to leave the parties and go into fashion and film? Uh, man, like everything, bro. Just trying to um, find uh, like-minded individuals like myself and just um, connections, bro. You know, I didn't know nothing about the fashion industry. As far as where to go get t-shirts wholesale, um, graphic designers, you know, because that's back in the day, you know, screen printing was that, you know, there's so many, it's different technology now, but mm -hmm. screen printing was, that was, that was, you know, if you start in a t-shirt brand, that's just what it was. Mm -hmm. um, just, bro, just trying to find connections and like-minded individuals and, um, manufacturers and the whole nine yards when it comes to fashion. Um, but when I was able to 
you know, find like-minded people and graphic designers and everything that I needed, that's when I started to flourish. Mm -hmm. You know, found the found the uh, mom and pops um, um, mom and pop shop that did my that did my printing uh, thumbprints right on Mill and Southern. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, rest in peace to Brad. He passed away last year. You know, oh, the owner God. of the, the business. Of yeah, he passed away. Um, shout out to Milton. Um, but they did everything. They did all my Unique Fantasy printing. Everything. I'm talking about from, from, uh, from, from printing to stitching to digitizing to vector files and formatting my files. And I didn't know nothing about none of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I even had the opportunity to print some shirts you know I, I established a relationship with them where i was actually back there doing my own stuff <laughs> you know um, worked there part-time as, as sales yeah so i worked there um got to know the game got to got to 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 get my hands dirty with with um with with fashion man and that's when i just took over the fashion industry in um in arizona i started throwing fashion shows mm -hmm. um all over town, uh, was a part of a lot of dope uh, fashion shows with um, Dominique Benet, uh, uh, Jador, rest in peace to Jador, um, real good friend of mine that passed away um, at 21. Uh, Ave, Humble Clothing, uh, which he really um, taught me a lot of the game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bobby Fresh, um, and these were the big dogs at the time. Uh, uh, Kendall Pittman, Vietnam Jeans, uh, uh, Marquise Wheaton, um, Eloquent, um, Will with Paper Chase Clothing, um, uh, Royalty Jeans, uh, Key Sales, man. So I met so many dope individuals, man, coming into the fashion world, man, and um, still friends with each individual to this day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Bro, the fashion scene out here, bro, we didn't really have a fashion scene um, coming up. Yeah. But we made a fashion scene. You know, A was this, was the pioneer, him and Bobby Fresh. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I want to give them they flowers right now, man. Yeah. Like, those two dudes right there, man, um, they are the pioneers out here for t-shirt brands and fashion. And to to see what Abe has done all these years, and what he got his own storefront, and what he's doing right now, and yeah. that shit's amazing, bro. Because I was I was with him every step of the way. I was right there, mm -hmm. seen it all. This is this is why are you working at that uh, print shop at this point, or just before you even started working there? You're watching uh, Abe. Uh, even before that, yeah. I, I started. I seen Abe at when he was at Fabulous Fades. Yeah. When he was uh, coming up, you know, he was cutting my hair like at 13. I was 13. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So just to see that nigga come up, bro, and and where he's at today, mm -hmm. that that's that's longevity, that's consistency, and that's, you know, uh, hard work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, so I'm proud of him, man. Yeah. Um, I do want to go back to like the start of Unique Fantasy, but I, I do want to... Um ask you uh, when it comes to Ave, you know, I've, you know, both of you guys are really good friends of mine. I know you guys for a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I've talked to Ave about what you guys have done and it's always just like, it's incredible what you guys have done. He always is, is proud of what you guys did. Same thing um, when I talk to you, but it's been a long time since you've done anything together. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and just honestly, man, and I was telling Ave this, I said, you know, I don't know what happened, but I can tell both of you have this when you guys talk about each other, both of you, yeah. it's the sense of, I don't know, what it almost feels like a little bit of sadness. You right. know what I mean? And maybe it's the reminiscing, I don't know, but I sense it in both of you guys when you talk about each other. Yeah, for sure. And, and you have a word together. Can you maybe just enlighten me on, like, why haven't you guys collaborated since all the stuff that you did? Man, you know what? That's a good question, man. Um, I think, bro, like, we're, we're, I think I disconnected because I was like, Life, you know what I mean? Life, um, starting my family and, you know, having kids and stuff like that. So it was a time in my life where I was just like, like, I need to get my shit together. Like from the outside looking in, people think, you know, people think she got all the money. People think, you know, his mom, you know, he got good, you know, come from a good background. His big brother, like everybody like, oh, them niggas, they eating over there. Like, you know what I mean? 
realistically. But it was a time I was I was working at a working at a bank. I wasn't happy, bro. It was I, the the money wasn't good, bro. And I'm just like, bro, I gotta do something. I gotta do something with my life. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like I was not doing nothing, but I'm I I want more for myself. Yeah. Like I'm trying to move up, move up the ladder with the company. They they hating on me. You know what I mean? So it's just like it was a time I was I was depressed, bro. That was yeah. that was the first time I ever been depressed in my life. I didn't know what depression was. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a white thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, I kind of was like, bro, let me get my let me put all this shit that I'm doing on hold and let me let me level up in my career. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what it was, bro. I was just like I wasn't happy, bro. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't happy at all. I wasn't happy with nothing. Was this something that you were communicating? With Abe? Nah, I just did, bro. I just, to be honest with you, bro, I just, See? I just disappeared. Yeah, I disappeared. Okay, that makes a lot of sense though, because yeah. it seems like he doesn't. I asked him, is he? I, said, I don't know. You know what yeah. I mean? And honestly, he was like, I don't know. If, I don't know if he has a problem with me. I don't. You know what I mean? I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing that I learned, like a lesson that I had to learn the hard way, is when people. Like when you do stuff with people, when you build with people, you it's just something a connection. Like yeah, for sure. And I used to take that for granted. You know what I mean? Like I would build something, and then I'm like, like I, I had a similar situation where me and my family built a recording studio. There's my cousin and his now wife and her brother, and I had ended up purchasing like a house at the time, and I'm 22, and I just got overwhelmed. It's like this is the real deal. Like yeah. I gotta handle this, and I didn't think at the time that I could do both. But I wasn't really, I wasn't communicating. I just one day was like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. You know what I'm saying? I got to handle business. I didn't take the time to explain them yeah, what yeah. was going on. And and that really hurt them, like deeply hurt them more yeah. than I ever realized until years later when they, you sure. know, let me know. So um, maybe, you know, like I just want to see y'all, you know. Yeah, connect. Yeah, yeah. It, it's so crazy because um, when Abe had uh, this, the Humble Headquarters, but before that it was a different name, right? Mm-hmm. Well, so, a popular trend. Yeah, so I pulled up on him. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen Abe in years, man. Mm-hmm. Years, years. Um, he was actually getting ready to close. Mm-hmm. I pulled up. You know, I pulled up on him right by the store. He was about. He was closing. He was about to get ready to leave. And I was like, "Hey, what up, boy? You know what I'm saying?" And he looked like, "Nigga, what? What's up?" Like, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, I said, "Bro, um, heard about the store. I just wanted to pull up and 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 buy something." So he reopens up the door. It's just me and him in there. Yeah. I buy uh, some sandals, the humble sandals, and I buy. I bought a couple things. Yeah. Just to show them. Yeah, my nigga, like you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I seen them when they opened the lunch pad, which is his current store now. Yeah. Um, I was doing business with J Dot. Mm-hmm. Um, we dropped some. Uh, we dropped some. Um, uh, some South Phoenix merch. Mm-hmm. And I had seen Abe again. I'm t- mind you, just years have passed by. Um, you know, I, I walk in the barbershop, he cutting, Jay Bird in there. I, I pop in. Hey, what's good? How y'all doing? And then he was like, damn, nigga, where the fuck you been? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I shook him, went over there, shook him up, gave him a hug, and uh, we chopped it up for a minute, and I left. Yeah. And that was a shit. I don't know. I can't remember when the last time. That was a long time ago, bro. Yeah. That was years ago. Mm-hmm. But, um... Yeah, man, it, it ain't no, it ain't, it ain't never been no bad blood with me yeah. Abe at all. I just was trying to find myself, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Find myself and like focus on my, focus on real life shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was behind on bills and like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. just, bro, I'm like, bro, I got to focus on real life. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I kind of just disappeared, moved, was moving around for a little bit and, um, Shit, you know, now I'm, 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 I'm I've been back on it for a while. I mean, yeah. I, ain't, I, I don't think I ever stopped. I just, it was just that small period, period of my life where I just kind of like, you know, took a break on everything. Mm-hmm. Every, I deleted all my social media, changed my phone number. I, I was like, fuck this. I'm, I got to focus on home. Yeah. So I did all of that, man. And um, but yeah, like shit. Um, it's all love, man. Me and Abe, we un, we undone a lot of shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Like we like if you bring up South Phoenix like like people that are really involved that really gave back that was really doing something that's really uh, putting on for their names and doing it's me and Abe bro mm-hmm. it, 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 it ain't nobody else it's me and Abe we yeah. did that we did that already 
know what I'm saying? And I and I and I stand on that too. Yeah. So a lot of people that's done some stuff out here, but they haven't. They ain't nobody done what me and Abe did. Yeah. No, nobody, nobody. Now the, the events that you guys were putting together. Mm-hmm. I mean, even to the video production. I was watching some of the old clips, man, mm-hmm. and it, it was so dope. It was never like y'all were shooting your own reality show. Yeah, man. And and we started early though too. We started early before social media was even like popping like that. Mm-hmm. So um, I say this all the time. We was way ahead of our time. Mm-hmm. I remember and I told Abe, I said, bro, I told him, you can ask him. I said, Abe, me and Abe was there every day. I said, Abe, you should shoot a, you should shoot a, a movie about your life, bro. Mm-hmm. You doing, you doing some great things, bro. And Abe was, he, Abe, the play, he played it off. Mm. I said, nah, bro, I'm serious. I got a team. I call my team right now. Let's, let's do something. He thought I was bullshitting. Man, hit my dudes up. Uh, my boy Oscar Carrillo, childhood friend. We grew up in the sandbox. Wilson. Mm-hmm. My elementary, you know. Um, we grew up as like babies, bro. Real good friend of mine. So we, I know that he was doing production. Um, and he was going to the uh, the art institute, the one that was on Dunlap. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, said, mind you, he shot my movie, but we'll get we'll get into my documentary. Yeah. Uh, but uh I said, man, I got I got my boy Abe, man. He's doing some real big things out here, man. You know, I ain't gonna never uh introduce you to somebody that ain't ready and willing to work. Man, him and Abe, wait, they met, um, established a relationship, and next thing I know, we shooting a uh we shooting a humble documentary. 